guys, it's Blue again, and today I have for you guys Mako's deck profile. So this is a request we've gotten a lot of, uh, mostly because I think we just didn't have it. And, you know, despite years ago building a Mako deck, we weren't that satisfied with it because we used a lot of those really cool um, war type monsters from Invasion of Chaos booster set, including the Orca Mega Fortress Whale, as a sub substitute for the actual Fortress Whale. So we kind of were hesitant to release the deck profile because we weren't even that thrilled with the deck once we had debuted it, especially as we were making more and more decks that were a little bit more accurate and we found creative solutions for. Um, we spent some time with Mako's deck really in limbo until we kind of came up with the solution that we had been working towards for a while. Um, and, you know, one that we feel has paid off the most, and we'll, we'll definitely get to that. So, starting off is three Amphibian Beasts. So, yes, it's going to be like a lot of our decks for non-main main characters, where it's built a lot around triplicates. And most of the deck <clears throat> um, is actually Mako's. Very few cards in the deck um, were filler. So, we're really happy that because of... The changes that we made, um, it feels a lot more like a Mako deck. Um, some of the cards are also just the generic fillers that, like, so many people had. We don't feel bad using them. Three flying fish. Okay, so now the strongest monster. Three great whites. So, um, again, his deck is, you know, some familiar cards. Um, New monsters that he pulled out for the Battle City Tournament. Um, but it was really cool to see Mako step it up a little bit versus what we saw in um, Duelist Kingdom. And of course, where they found him um, at the uh, aquarium, really, uh, I think they did a nice job really making sure that they kept the character um, consistent in how he, not just he dueled, but also how he was portrayed. So his... Favorite monster, um, although not his strongest monster, is the legendary fisherman, the card that reminded him of his father, the card he eventually passes on to Joey. Now, of course, Mako has three. Also, minor censoring from the original with those uh, little ball things on the end of uh, what's really a hunting spear. Harpoon, spear, whatever you want to call it. All right, so the big bad in the deck is the Fortress Whale. With 2350 attack, this card is a monster. So, for those of you who really follow card pricing, card markets, you'll know that three of these cards is nearly impossible to get, as well as being ridiculously expensive. And of course, for those of you who might be thinking we spent that much money on three cards, um, when we could have built so many more decks, we didn't. I'm going to quickly touch on the fact that Delta and I, from the beginning, and still maintain that we don't like to use Oracas. Specifically, though, we don't like to use Oracas for cards that are not printed. We've gotten a lot of requests from people um, and suggestions to use those cards to make our decks more authentic. But Delta and I have always been driven by the principle that we want to build decks with actual TCG cards so that anyone can copy any one of our decks and play with them without having to have um, their own copy of a Orica card or a proxy card. By the way, Orica means like original card, um, and essentially it's a fake card. For anyone not familiar with the term Orica, Orica, there's an either, not Orca like the whale. So we got three copies of custom made Fortress Whale. So again, there is a stretch in that it's not easy to get this card, even as an Orca, but it's still a legitimate TCG card. It's just incredibly hard to get, but it it was, you know, produced in multiple copies. And we're still hoping that at some point, Konami will reprint it. But that's how we approached it. So we don't want to use fictitious cards, um, but this is a real card that unfortunately uh, has been screwed as far as printing. So, again, difficult to get, but 
it's a legitimate TCG card. So Fortress Whale is the big bad of the deck. Um, it was a really cool card. Now he did give the card to Joey. We do see Mako hand over two cards because that was their stakes. Um, the Legendary Fisherman and the Fortress Whale. Now we don't see the Fortress Whale's oath. Um, debatably that kind of comes with the card. Debatably that might not even be a card because sometimes things are just made up in the anime. Um, but we never saw Joey play it, which is why we didn't put it in Joey's deck. Fortress Wheel's Oath, three copies. Um, now this card's actually a lot easier to get your hands on. So these are actual real cards. Fortress Wheel is just a completely ridiculous printing thing. So one of the filler cards is Legendary Ocean. Um, a filler and a non-generic card. So this is definitely a card that um, helps his deck out. It lets him summon Legendary Fisherman right away. It does also count as Umi, so it helps him. Now, you will notice, again, we have a rat of stickers. And all this really is is that the card's name counts as Umi, but not in the deck because of the issue where technically you could not run multiple Umi and multiple a Legendary Ocean because they're actually both called Umi. This is for the TCG card game, and the OCG, but this is something that we try to break for character decks because it helps us fill the deck sometimes if, um, like in this deck, you know, we can give him more copies of spell cards that will help the deck be a little bit more um, well-rounded and more stable. A Monster Reborn. Two of the ever-useful Pot of Greed. Two Power of Kashin, so something that we think is a really nice, um, you know, equip for Aqua types. Three copies. Return of the Doomed. Three copies of Umi. So, again, us kind of doing that little arguably cheating workaround of the Legendary Ocean does allow him to use three Umi and two Oceans, so really three Umi in total, but it's character decks. It's not I don't think we consider really game breaking, although it does make his strategy with Tornado Wall uh, much more consistent. That being said, it also stands as his main defense in the deck. So helping him get that defense, which does still have an out, uh, is something that we really try to balance in the deck. And his last card is, of course, Rental Tribute. So this deck is really cool because a lot of War-type monsters definitely feels a lot better playing with it um, and seeing it with the inclusion of those Fortress Whales. Um, if anybody does want a copy, um, we'll put a link to the seller from eBay here. Also, you can always check out eBay. I mean, there is a wide market for people trying to make custom cards because, you know, as many of us know, there's a big disconnect between the cards we see in the anime and the cards that make it to the actual card game. And it's a shame that a lot of cards aren't there, but it's not something else that I really want to fill. Again, we want to play with the real TCG cards that you could do on, you know, a dueling book, or any kind of card simulator. Um, some have um, custom cards, but anyway, so that's Mako's deck. You know, you definitely saw the duel, and of course we'll probably do more at some point in the future because this has been such an um, underutilized character by us because of, again, it's time in limbo. But seeing that Fortress will come out, I think really makes up for it because we really want to do this deck the right way and we kind of just were waiting around to make sure that getting Orcas was the right decision for the deck. So thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned because we're almost at the finals. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.